Okay. So, um, so we said, okay, um, we need to um, discuss, we need to hear each other. Um, we know that that's, uh, you know, that, that is a difficult uh, step uh, in order to resolve conflict, but it's a necessary step, right? So, um, yeah, so let me just share this. Okay. So it's something that needs to be done. So lovingly discuss, and um, you know, it's it's easy for us to discuss good things. It's easy for us to discuss, you know, happy things. But when we are, uh, when we hear someone say, "Okay, you know, here are some things that happened, and because of which, you know, we you, you fought," and um, and when somebody points out, um, speaking the truth in love. And saying, okay, this is where you went wrong. It's um, it's not easy for us to take. It's not easy for us to receive it, right? So, um, but it needs to be done. Okay. Um, one of the things that really help um, help in this discussion, okay, one of the things that really help us is this um, is the kind of statements that we can use to share what went wrong. Okay. Now, suppose, um, like, let's say the husband and wife wanted to go to church on time. Okay, now this is what normally happens. So um, they wanted to reach church on time. Church service was at, let's say, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. And uh, something happened, and they went late. So they went, they reached by 9.30 and uh, yeah so so that is that caused a conflict so what happened was they started late from the house so as they were going uh, both of them were hurling insults at each other this is what you did this is why we are late and uh, the other person was saying you are always late you always do this you know remember last time also you said that so all the while they are fighting and then they go to church and then they are you know not even looking at each other and on top of that that this sermon was about forgiveness and the uh, whole thing of unforgiveness. And so, you know, they are very condemned, very uh, um, convicted. Um, yeah, so all this happened, right? So so let's say they are trying to solve, they're trying to resolve it, they're sitting down and, and talking. So what would be the best way to communicate what happened? Okay, maybe the it was the fault of the husband who woke up late Okay, and uh, maybe the clothes were not ironed, the wife's clothes were not ironed, and uh, she started ironing it only in the morning. Okay, so that also contributed to it. And, um, well, you know, so many other things, right? All these small details. So what would be the best way to communicate that to each other? You know, you're speaking the tr truth in love, and you need to share this. You need to because this this, is, this needs to be sorted. This needs to be spoken. So the best way to share this is to use these I statements. Okay, so to say that I felt hurt or I got upset. I got upset when I saw you ironing your clothes in the morning, because I've seen I've told you some ten times earlier. You know you. Now, that's not the correct way to do it. I've, you know, we, we discussed it uh, in the past that um, that should not be the case. That we need to, you know, get everything ready the previous evening itself. But I got upset. Okay, so if one person says I got upset, rather than saying, you know, you're always doing this, you know, you make me angry or you make me upset. You know, the thing is that uh, the same truth. Okay. So what is the fact? One person got upset. And that person who got upset is telling the other person that I got upset. Right? It's communicating that. And what caused that person to be upset? It was because that person did not get ready and was ironing the clothes um, at in the morning. Okay. But when you say it this way, you know, I got upset. I was angry, I was upset, I was disappointed when I saw you ironing your clothes in the morning 
instead of getting ready the previous evening itself, getting them ready the previous evening itself, and the fact that it delayed us, and because of which we went late, I was upset, I was angry, and I'm sorry. Right? The other way to say it is, you make me angry. Every time you iron your clothes in the morning, instead of getting it done the previous evening, you made me angry. You made me upset. You delayed us. Right? What's the difference? It's the same thing. The facts are the same. But when you say, when you make these I statements, you are deflecting, you're changing the direction you know, of focus. Right? It, instead of blame, it is like you're objectively stating how you were feeling, how you felt because of the situation. Okay? So same thing is communicated. But here, no, uh, you, you're just communicating how you felt, and you're not uh, making a you know judgment on the other person. Okay, so then it helps the other person to again, you know, reevaluate what they were saying, what they did, and and come to a place saying, yeah, I I know, uh, I'm sorry, I did that. Well, now it's the uh, turn of the other person. Isn't it? I felt hurt when you constantly criticize me and when you constantly blame me. I felt hurt. And you were shouting when you shout. I felt hurt when you shouted at me in front of all the others. You know, uh, the neighbors could hear you. Yeah, the neighbors could hear you. You know, as we get into the uh, car or as, as we got on the bike, the neighbor neighbors could hear. In fact, the children were watching from the balcony, and you you didn't. You know, when I felt hurt, I felt uh, shamed uh, by that by, by what you said in public, right? So. In 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 this way, we begin to share and we begin to okay come to a place of saying okay now what do I do? You know how can we avoid this? How can we um, how can we resolve this? Okay, so so you come up with some solutions. Okay, let's uh, okay I'll uh, it, it's something that works. Right? Okay, let's get ready. I I okay I'll choose to get ready on the previous day. Or you come up with something and follow through with it. Right. Um, so that's something that uh, okay, it's not just an idea, but it's something that you decide to implement. You carry carry out that idea, implement, right? So um, so all this is done in an environment of goodwill and peace, okay? which is something for us to learn, okay? Because all through, whenever we've had conflicts. We, we may probably just let loose, right? Uh, we just let loose without, you know, bearing in mind consequences. It's okay. Just let loose. Just forget about it. We'll deal with it later. Now, right now, the other person needs to know how I'm feeling, and I'm just going to no. I'm not going to hold back. I'm just going to give it to them, right? So maybe that's how we have learned. Okay, conflict, trigger, anger. This is it. This is the learned behavior. This is how I saw my parents do it. My parents were yelling at each other, arguing with each other. So the kid learns, the child learns, you know, and we learn. Okay, this is how I, I should respond. The slightest trigger, the slightest thing that people are not uh, getting ready or people are not doing what I want them to do, I'm going to you know, just yell out at them. I'm going to talk down at them. I'm going to blame them. I'm going to make fun of them. You know, maybe that's how we've learned it all this while. We need to unlearn those things. We need to learn not to put down the person. We need to learn, you know, not to be sarcastic. Sometimes we do that in public, you know, in front of maybe guests or in front of others, you know, just to make those sarcastic jokes. You know, the other person is not laughing. It's not funny anymore, right? When the person is not laughing with you, but you are actually laughing at them. Right? It's not funny anymore. Right, one person is feeling bad, and the other person is well, just going at it. So we need to, um, you know, discuss it, and this needs to be done in an environment of uh, uh, of shalom or peace. You know, resolving it in peace. Now, um, like we said, when when we choose to resolve in peace, uh, the Lord Jesus is, uh, is backing up that person. Blessed are the peacemakers. You know, making an attempt. Uh, we may not. Be perfect, but you're making an attempt, and you're 
your intent is very clear that you want to make peace right and you want to come to a place of uh, agreement right? you know sometimes uh, we would need to let go we would need to you know um, just like what the lord would have done you need to forgive and let go right and um, there are those times when we need to do that um and this pride comes in the way right and there are times when you're thinking you know how many times do i need to let go i'm the one even the last time i know i was the one who was let uh, i was doing this i was the one who backed off how many times right well when you know that the lord is applauding you know that the lord is backing you up in this right you can just go ahead and do that okay uh, well the lord will deal with the other person you can be sure of that you, the lord will deal with your spouse because you're saying okay um, you know the spouse is also um, in a place of receiving in a place of wanting to you know be christ like and, and maybe you know uh, is, is not as mature as you are is not as um, patient as you are but you can be assured that the lord will deal you can be assured that the Lord is reaching out. The Lord is you know, changing, pulling on their hearts and uh, making their hearts soft and tender. So you can be assured of that. But it's very important that um, we do the right thing. We want to choose to do the right thing in that, you know, in the, in that whole uh, conflict or resolving the conflict that you choose, irrespective of what the other person's response is. Now, that's a difficult thing right um so irrespective of it you want you need to want to do that you desire to do the right thing okay so we looked at five steps so far right the next thing is to forgive okay to receive forgiveness and to give forgiveness okay both are important okay to forgive um to forgive when we forgive, we are not saying that many times we find it difficult to forgive um, because we we think that it is, um, you know, uh, uh, how should I put it? We, we, because we think that, okay, we are actually not, uh, we are condoning what the other person did. Okay. Uh, we're just brushing out whatever that person cost that hurt that they cause you know when we say forgiving i forgive you we're saying okay all that hurt that you did to me all that you you know the way in which you hurt me it doesn't matter well it's not that forgiveness is not that forgiveness is acknowledging yes this is what it's not denial right so many times we find it difficult to forget how can i forgive how can I say that all this didn't happen? It's not denial. We're saying all this happened. Well, the person is guilty. The person is guilty of saying, this person is guilty of doing all this. And yet, I'm choosing not to be, not to take revenge. I'm choosing to forgive. Right? So what is the standard of forgiveness? We see in Ephesians 4 and verse 32 standard of forgiveness okay be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you okay so that's um ephesians 4 32. we see that even as god in christ forgave so that is a standard for forgiveness so if if scripture gives us a standard um not just forgiveness but any any you know any aspect of life like okay this is how you ought to live we can be sure that the spirit of god will equip and empower us to do it because there's no point you know if this is not possible if it's not possible to live in this manner uh, then the bible has no right to dictate to us or instruct us and say, okay, you live in this manner. Right? The Lord would not do it. The very fact that the Lord gives an instruction, it's because it is possible. It is possible, 
as he empowers us by his spirit. It is possible as we cooperate with him. Right? It is possible. So this is the standard for forgiveness. Saying like, oh, how God in Christ forgave. So when you look at it, it's like it seems like wow. How did he forgive? He forgave unconditionally. He forgave, um, you know, not looking at my response or not looking at my reaction. Um, he just forgave. Right? So, so that's how that is what is expected, and he forgave repeatedly. So that is what is again expected. So if I have that posture, then I can forgive. You know, God, you forgave me, so I'm willing to forgive. You know, some sometimes it's it, the the person's act has caught so much trauma, right? Uh, it could be violence, it could be domestic violence, it could be um, you know uh, maybe uh, violence, uh, verbal violence, like verbal abuse. Uh, it could be physical abuse. It could be sexual abuse. Now, uh, in such cases, when there's um, when the conflict is very very um, intense and it's so um, so difficult, it's good to get someone to uh, intermediate. You know, uh, maybe a counsel, maybe a counselor, maybe a pastor, maybe a you know a, a believer who's um, who's unbiased, right, to help uh, navigate this whole process. Because the hurt is too deep, and also uh, maybe the it has been something of a repeated thing that has happened over years. This total breakdown of trust, right? So, in order to come to that place of forgiveness, you need someone to help, right, individually, and also to facilitate um, that forgiveness. Maybe you know, as a couple as well. Right. So it, it's 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 okay to get help. It's it's okay. It's not a it's not a stigma. Maybe in some cultures we feel that oh it's it's a stigma. How can I talk about you know these things that have happened to me? Uh, it's ashamed, and you know, I'm ashamed to even speak of that. You know, uh, how can I even do that? But the fact is that as long as we keep it you know stuffed in, and right, we are not really receiving healing, right, we need to we need to be able to talk about it. Right. There's no stigma. There's no shame. Um, if we want to receive help, there's no stigma in uh, reaching out to get help. Right. In fact, it is a it is a brave thing to do. It is a courageous thing to do to reach out and get help. Okay. So here we're saying, okay, um, uh, to receive uh, or to extend forgiveness. Right. What are we doing? We're accepting. We're being specific. We're accepting what we could have done uh, wrong. We acknowledge our wrongdoing, and we apologize specifically what what we did wrong. Okay. Sometimes, uh, and and it it really helps. Rather than saying I'm sorry for all that I did, you know, in blanket statement, I'm sorry for all that I did. I'm sorry for all that I said. Well, it's it's good, but it's good to it's good to specify. You know, I I know I should not have said that. Uh, I'm sorry, or I know I should not have done that. I'm really, you know, please forgive me. Right? It's good to it's good to be specific, and uh, it really help uh, in the healing process. Right? It'll help the resolving of the conflict to be specific and to say that. So the uh, and to and to actually, you know, it's a difficult thing because you're owning up. So it's good to. You know, look at the person and uh, face the person and say that. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not, not at that place yet to face the person and say it. Maybe, uh, maybe a writing a letter, letter or a you know, note would help to start. Sorry, to start off. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I did, and I'm willing to change. Um, I, you know, I will not uh, give an assurance. I will not do this again. So can you please forgive me? And can you uh, please forgive? So the thing is this: that um, you know, uh, one thing is to ask for forgiveness. The other thing is, if someone uh, asks uh, us for forgiveness, right? So are you willing to forgive, extend forgiveness? You know, both are important 
one is to ask for forgiveness and receive forgiveness and if the other other person asks for forgiveness from you are you willing to extend that forgiveness right the other person is saying i'm sorry you know sometimes we well it it needs to be it's need to be said in all sincerity uh, it should not be you know done in a very superficial manner trivial manner um but we we are not quick to forgive right we want to take our time we want to okay i want to see some i want to see some repentance you know on their face i want to see some tears <laughs> uh, they're too happy how can i forgive <laughs> right um, but the thing is forgiveness is a is a decision right extending forgiveness is a decision and this is what we see sometimes uh, you know it's, it's because it's so deep we are not unable to forgive but uh, this is the promise that if we are willing okay um we can actually come to that place saying lord i'm i'm willing and as we come to that place of willingness the lord gives us the ability sometimes we don't even feel those emotions right we don't emotionally feel like forgiving because it's been so traumatic what we've been through is very very uh, traumatic very hurtful so if we come to a place of saying lord i'm willing right you make that decision and saying okay god i'm willing to forgive i'm not able to but i'm willing two different things right one is the will the decision the other one is the ability and you're saying god i'm willing god uh yeah i i can i'm i'm willing but i'm not able i don't feel it god i'm not able to the lord understands so if we are willing the lord gives us the ability to do it um you know a uh, very interesting verse right philippians 2 and verse 13 um philippians 2 maybe you can just read verses 12 and 13 philippians 2 therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed um, not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling verse 13 for it is god who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure right god who works in you both to will and to do so both to come to that place of willingness well god works in us and we saw how we can prepare our hearts spend time in his presence um you know um receive his love receive his enabling so it's got to who works in us both to will and to do you know the to the implementation the action uh part of it right the decision and the action god actually works in us the holy spirit works in us right so you see that you know in marriage you see the part that we want god we need god we can't just do it by ourselves he designed marriage he designed it so we need the designer we need the creator to be part of our lives right okay so uh, both to will and to do for us good pleasure right so we release forgiveness we extend forgiveness and the last step is to release a blessing now this is even more this is again it's going to draw out a lot more and you're saying good things about them now lord bless them Lord, prosper them, right? Uh, God, you know, it's not this. Uh, I forgive. Uh, it is to extend forgiveness, yes, but it's also to release a blessing, right? Um, well, in the Gospels, we we see the Lord Jesus saying, "Bless those who, um, who uh, I mean, uh, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who." persecute you bless those who curse so it's a it's a blessing uh, you're releasing you're releasing the uh, just think about it you know uh, you've come to that place of okay extending receiving forgiveness now you're blessing each other um and i i remember we um, you know we had this in, in one of the workshops and uh, we just spent some time of course we there, there is, it was not about resolving conflicts or anything but we just did this exercise where people would come and speak blessing okay you're just sitting there and uh, maybe there are 10 others who are surrounding you and each each person takes turn to speak blessings over you 
okay, uh, reminding you about who you are in Christ. Right, speaking words of affirmation from the scriptures and just blessing you. Now, it is very powerful because it's the word of God. And the thing is, um, you know, we were all uh, we all spent some time just hearing from God, um, hearing what the, what God would say, would want us to say to this person, and then uh, you know, from the word, we just just declaring scripture, declaring blessing, and it's very powerful. Very powerful, right? Uh, Ephesians 4 talks about how uh, when we speak edifying words, there's an impartation of grace. There's an impartation of grace, right? which means there is an enabling, there's an uh, there's a, a enabling power uh, because of the grace of God. So um, when you release, when you speak a blessing, there is that impartation of grace in their lives. So it really seals the entire process. Okay, so. Um, we looked at seven steps. We saw that uh, you know you are speaking a blessing. You are uh, um, where well, we are. Uh, we are choosing to you know even though we might be reminded during that whole process, we might be reminded of certain things which cause us to become angry. Which uh, maybe you're looking at that person, you're seeing the expression of the person, and you're thinking, okay, I I know I need to. Uh, uh, you know, you're reminded of maybe taking revenge or not doing things from your heart and all that, but you're choosing to stick to um, you know the process of resolving and knowing that you know this will result in both of you coming to a place of agreement. Okay. Now again, just want to remind us about that verse. You know, we saw in um, was it First Peter chapter three, and it. It is to come to a place of understanding. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. What is the result? That your prayers may not be hindered. Okay, so you're coming to that place of agreement. And the Lord Jesus also said, you know, if two of you agree, the word symphonio, meaning coming to that place of agreement and praying and asking, touching anything that you ask, it will be done. So this conflicts. These conflicts prevent us from coming to a place of agreement, right? So our prayers are hindered. We're not able to pray effectively, and uh, we're not able to do much as a couple. And this this whole thing is interfering with the communication, interfering with the, the peace in the house, and, and all that. So God really wants us to come to the place of agreement, dwell with understanding, right? So um, we are refusing to be divided. You're refusing to um, to let the enemy divide, but come to a place of um, you know, releasing, uh, I mean, resolving conflict and releasing a blessing. Okay, so um, well, okay, that's what we looked at. Solve the matter in peace. Give um, the last three: you know, give and receive forgiveness and release blessing. Okay, so we pray and prepare. We receive God's empowering to love and forgive and receive God's wisdom to address the situation. So the first three are what we do like on our own personally. Then we uh, address the matter. We discuss it with the other person. We are speaking the truth in love. Right? We are making those I statements. We are saying, okay, I felt this way or I experienced this when you said it or when you did this. I was upset when this happened. Right, and we are choosing to resolve in a, in an atmosphere of peace right, and goodwill. Um, so we're thinking of options. We're thinking of ideas. Maybe we are brainstorming things and saying, "How can we? How can we solve this problem? Um, and how can we move forward? Right? What should we avoid? And uh, and all that. Right? And uh, and all the while you're saying, "Okay, I'll do this. Right? I I will do this, and um, and so on. And then you know you you. Uh, uh, you're receiving forgiveness, you're giving forgiveness, extending forgiveness, keeping in mind that yes, I'm the standard for forgiveness is how God and Christ forgave me. And that is the standard. And then not only do we uh, do we receive forgiveness, but also we extend forgiveness to others, uh, to to a spouse, and we don't stop there. We choose to you know, release a blessing upon their lives, right? So we, so we do that, and uh, yeah, and then we resolve. Uh, we resolve. Um, okay. 
Um, okay, so um, so any questions here? You know, based on maybe your own experience of resolving a conflict, maybe there could be a, there could be some challenges. Maybe you're saying, okay, this is um, yeah, this is sounds good in theory, but um, you know, practically, does it really work? <laughs> Um, yeah, so any any questions? You know, where do you think the challenges are? Um, maybe some things that you need to work on, avoid. Maybe you felt that, okay, this is not working. Um, maybe we could talk about that. Okay. Any Any questions? Anything from your own lives, personally? Maybe if you're a single person, you could talk about, uh, you know, maybe how you tried resolving a conflict generally, you know, with another person and what worked, what didn't work. Um, and if you're a married person, you could just talk from experience, share from experience, uh, or based on your experience, maybe you have some questions, what worked, what didn't work, um, how can things be better? So, yeah. Um, any questions, anything that you want to share? Yeah, so when you go through this, these all these seven steps, um, anybody who tried it before? And uh, maybe, you know, all these seven steps, maybe you did it in some, some order, uh, in some measure, and you felt that okay, somewhere something didn't happen, you know, uh, or maybe it was it was a great success. You could share about that as well. Okay. Anyone? Um, yeah, yeah Jeffina. There was a conflict between my brother. <laughs> Uh -huh. And uh, for the first few weeks, we didn't just talk about it. And I thought mm. it will just go away <laughs> if we just don't talk about it. It will just mm. go away and it will all be all right. I think it was before I came to Bible College. So I I was uh, actually packing for Bangalore and I just made him busy working so that we just didn't talk about it. I was just telling him, we'll pack this, get this. But there was, there was a little... Uh, disturbance over the conversations even when we were talking something was not right something was not good so mm. i think before i came here uh one uh, we usually speak at night after everyone's session. we just uh got together and i told him sorry mm. <laughs> i told him like whatever i said i'm sorry whatever i did i'm sorry and he was also i'm also sorry and <laughs> it was good <laughs> Mm. Because uh, I was about to move, so I don't want to leave uh, with such conflict uh, from home. He's also about mm. to move to a different place. I'm also about to move. So we just sorted things out. And I, mm. and I think I wrote a big letter to him. Mm. <laughs> and mm. I also gave him some gifts. <laughs> so right. yeah, that was good. That was good. After that, uh, I think it's good. Yeah. Right. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, okay, now you took the initiative, right? Um, so that's a, that's a big thing in a sense, uh, and it's a courageous thing to do. Um, you felt trouble in your spirit and you took the initiative. You said, okay, I can't leave this undone. I need to address it. I need to do this. Now that's a, that's a big step. Um, many of us, um, we, I mean, we feel that something needs to be done. But okay, I'm going to wait for him. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to wait for her to actually take the step, right? Um, so that's uh, that's where we sometimes you know, just miss those opportunities, and then you know it just gets over. I mean, it, it, time just goes by, right? Without uh, reconciling, and then and things could actually become worse, worse off. So, so the thing is, we, uh, we yeah, to take that big step. I think that's a that's a great. Um, uh, that's a good takeaway from this whole thing. You took the initiative. And so did you feel like a little uncomfortable, Jeffina? Like in the sense, a little weird, a little uncomfortable just to you know, talk about those things? Or was it OK for you? 
yeah i think i i took time actually one week uh, mm. <laughs> i i wanted to solve the whole thing but then i i'll used to i'll go to the room and i think i'll speak about it and then i'll come mm. back not speaking about it i'll just speak about something and then i come right. back uh he was also not showing any expressions from his side he's also acting so all right and thing i was like okay maybe he's all right maybe mm. i thought like he's all right but mm. when i spoke i came to know that oh you were also not all right, right. <laughs> he was also right. uh, having that feeling inside right and i was like oh thank mm. god i spoke <laughs> mm. so yeah it was not easy that mm. thing i want to say it was yeah. not at all not at all easy because uh Mm. I think the conflict hurt at both of us. So right. So we also want to be healed on the inside first. Right. Before speaking about it, like uh, I can't just go and shout at him because mm. I was also hurt. It he was also hurt. It. So I can't right. just go. Why? How can you do this to me? I can. Uh, if I mm. asked him that first week, maybe I would have just shouted. I think because mm. uh, how can you ask these questions to me or something? But uh, I took some time to be healed to understand what. what is his perspective why he said yeah. all of those things to me yeah and then i finally can okay this is his perspective mm. okay so he did it for my good he thought about mm. all these things so and then i went like uh, and i told him what i thought at that time also why mm. <laughs> i also told him why i was hurted why right. why uh, why those things were hurting to me why Mm. Like he didn't understand my perspective, so I also told that <laughs> this is my right. perspective. This is the whole thing, and you talk mm. from the side, but somehow it's all okay. Mm. Wow, well, good. good, yeah. So that's the thing, you know. You, you always um, see it doesn't. So that's another thing to keep in mind that it, it's it it's okay to feel a little uncomfortable. It's okay to feel a little weird. Um, um, we might know the person well we might not know the person well but then you know it's 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 going to feel a little uncomfortable um to be able to do this so as we take the initiative as we want to do this um uh, you know to expect that so you know that okay this is how it's going to be but then it's okay i need to do it right um yeah so so the thing is that um you know when we consider god's perspective god is for the lord is for peace the lord is for reconciliation and we see it in so many ways in terms of forgiveness in terms of the lord blessing the peacemaker and uh, you know calling them sons of god so he is for reconciliation he is for the resolving of conflict okay um now so one beautiful thing happens um uh, when it comes to resolving of conflict is that the bond becomes even stronger Okay. So we're talking about husband and wife and the relationship becomes even stronger than before. Right? Um because simply because it's in God's God's perspective and God's eyes that's his will. You know you when you work out his will then you you know you're in the will of God, you're in the plan and purpose of God. Then there is you know God releasing uh you know his um blessing upon it so it becomes even stronger than before. and and it's it's amazing how things can turn out how the marriage can improve how the marriage relationship can improve how the communication can improve and and so on but here's the thing you know one last thing before we close this chapter is that we need to resolve to keep strife out of our life okay so what is strife you know strife is uh, intense quarreling strife is intense like fighting maybe um so we need to make a decision okay to the best of my ability right i need to keep strife out you know it so in your conversations in your you know in your actions everything you know it okay there oh this is a possibility now the dam is going to break if i you know if we are going to pursue in this manner we're going to keep talking in this manner well that's it the dam's going to break it's going to be a flood of waters and it's going to be we are going to be overwhelmed you know it's going to sweep us all that has been built you know over these days and over these months it's going to break down right you know that and and the, in fact uh like god actually warns us he gives you a check on the inside you know that okay i should not pursue in this so this thing is to put a pause 
right? And say, okay, let's let's not you know go any further with this. Let's you know just be quiet and say, okay. Um, so that is what we see, you know, um, even in the scriptures that we read today from Proverbs twenty five. Um, we see that um, well, a word fitly spoken or by long forbearance, a gentle tongue. Well, this is going to change the whole scenario. This is going to change the equation. It's going to change the atmosphere. Right? It's going to uh, do something uh, in the relationship. So, um, yeah. So the thing is to pause, to take a step back, and not proceed further in the same manner. Right? Um, so uh, quarreling, contentions, strife. Well, it's going to affect everything in the home. Just understand that it's going to affect children. We think, okay, when we when we have quarrels, um, I remember like when my parents used to quarrel. Uh, well, it, it affected me uh, for some reason. You know, uh, there was a lot of unpleasantness, and I just wished that okay, things would just get better. And I uh, I just wished the things were, that they would not quarrel, that they would not be angry, and sometimes I would feel guilty saying. So it was no fault of mine. I feel that hey, maybe I should do something to stop. I felt, you know, powerless to stop. I was not able to stop. And uh, sometimes, you know, I used to feel guilty. I think maybe it's my fault because as a child, you know, you don't, you're not, mature, you're not mature enough, right? And you're you're processing things differently, and you're seeing, and these things happen, and, and it's kind of, you know, affecting you as well emotionally. So. So you think about that. I think about all that. You actually do not stand to gain when there's stri constant strife and quarrel and arguments in the house. It changes the whole atmosphere. Right? Scripture says that in the tents of the righteous, there is a voice of rejoicing. Well, that's not there anymore. It talks about you know how the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, that is not an automatic thing. It means that we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in releasing, in cooperating with Him to have His kingdom, to have His rule and reign in our homes. Right? So strife is the opposite of that. Strife breaks down everything. And strife is a weapon of the enemy. And the enemy creeps in very subtly to create a strife to create a disruption to create disagreements um, and we know the plan of the enemy John 10 and verse 10 very clear it, it is to steal and kill and destroy it is to steal the peace of mind is to steal the joy that God wants us as believers in a, in a righteous home in a righteous marriage to enjoy and to destroy to kill and to destroy destroy the very marriage itself right so that is satan's plan and, and the lord has come that we might have life and life in its fullness right so when we choose to keep strife out no now we need to do it in the right manner just because we need to keep strife out you cannot live in denial like if somebody's just abusing if somebody's doing you know something so just because you don't want to you know just uh, said that right. If you're going to live in denial, if you're going to, you know, just brush things off. Now that's not going to help. Right? We need to address. We need to confront. But it needs done in a loving manner. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, now there could be, you know, several questions in the sense. I know, you know, what if one person is all one person is all in and wants to solve, and the other person is unwilling, totally unwilling. What do I do? I'm all for resolving, but the other person is not, right? So um, obviously, it needs a lot more from us, a lot more from you, you know, the one who understands that. Well, God wants this, um, and uh, so for both the husband and the wife to have the same, uh, I mean, the same goal or the same vision, and saying this is what we want, um, it's very important. Right. It's very important for both the husband and the wife to understand the goal of marriage. It's very important for both the husband and the wife to understand, okay, um, this is what God wants. This is what God has designed uh, marriage to be. Right. 
So that's why it's it's important at the outset to have a proper understanding of marriage. So what if it is not there? Well, in some way, we can facilitate, right? Um, well, maybe the church can facilitate. Maybe the you know a ministry can facilitate. You know, you have a lot of resources uh, out there. Maybe a Bible study on marriage, a series on marriage. Um, maybe there are ministries which have marriage workshops, right? Uh, talking about marriage, and they do it in a in a very non-threatening, you know, in a fun way. At the same time, exposing the couple to the Word of God, exposing the couple to God's plans and God's design. So um, it can be deeply convicting, and and you come to a place of saying, "Yeah, it is possible," and I and I want this, right? So that is very important. So, uh, well, if um, so, the thing is to get help. Okay, the thing is to head, get help. The thing is to put pride away and say, and have those heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your spouse and saying, we need to change. We need things to change. It's not helping. Um, and to find out the root cause. Why is it? Why is it? Maybe one person is um, in some form of addiction. You know, as believers, as you know, as carnal believers, some form of addiction, uh, something, some emotional affair, something which is you know causing this, um, which is opening the door for them, and some things that need to change. So uh, that needs to be addressed, right? So the thing is to get help, get understanding, um, and then and then do it. Okay. Um, yeah. So this. Uh, we see as uh, something is very important, and especially as um, as a young couple about to get married. It can it is for everyone, for people who are married, especially for people who who are uh, desiring to be married. So the thing is, during courtship days, everything is fine. You know, everything is happy, and then they're all like very starry eyed and you know, refusing to look at the negative side of the other person. Just you know, we're also presenting our best self to the other person. You know, I don't want this person to you know not like me. So you're just presenting your best best self, and you are not really you know the person doesn't see the negative side of you, uh, or at least you know just glimpses of it. So. It is very important for such people, you know, who are single and who are desiring to get married, to actually have this capability or to have this skill. If we have a conflict, how are we going to resolve it? Okay, to have this understanding. Right. Okay. So we shall stop here. If there are questions, you know, we can we can always ask in the next class as well. Okay. Um, okay. So we stop here. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet again soon. God bless.